Right here, I'm going to show how to compute the solution to a linear programming problem using Excel's solver. And um, so, with linear programming problems, we address problems that are stated similar to this one. So we have the Lancaster Brewery production problem here. And they produce uh, two kinds of, uh, of beverages. They produce a blonde and a red. Uh, and, um, and what they want to do is, given the available uh, materials that they have on hand, and they have corn, 500 pounds, hops, 60 ounces, and malt, 900 pounds. And they want to figure out how to use this material and to produce how many barrels of blonde and red so as to maximize their profits. Okay, so this is a standard linear programming problem. It's a simple one because there are only two variables to choose from and um, and trying to maximize profit. Now, uh, what makes the problem um, more than uh, being completely trivial is the fact that we use uh, 20 pounds of corn for every every barrel of blonde, two ounces of hops, and, and 10 pounds of malt. And uh, no corn on the red, one ounce of hops, and 30 pounds of malt. Now, the issue here is that um, for this is for each barrel then, uh, we use this much of each material depending on blonde or red. And we can compute our total usage of materials. This number here would be the number of barrels we produce times this number to give this number. So let's look at that. You see we have C4 times C10. C4 times C10, here it's 1 times 20 gives us 20. Watch what happens if I change this to 2 instead of 1, or make it 21. If I make it 21, then we're using 420 pounds of corn uh, to make 21 barrels of blonde, one barrel of red. So you see we're pushing up against the limit of available corn, which is 500 pounds, and actually not that far from the limit on available hops. So the idea is how much of blonde, how much of red to maximize profits subject to the fact that our total usage has to be less than or equal to the amount available. Okay, so this is the way linear programming works. Now, we might just start guessing at numbers here. Let's say, I uh, now what's our profit here? Our profit is uh, 1350 if we do that. Suppose I change this to 10, and I change this to, to uh, 6, and I hit return, I'm making uh, 1140, 10 barrels of blonde, 6 barrels of red. Notice the profit on a barrel of red is 50% more than the profit on the barrel of blonde, and we use considerably smaller amount of our available material. So how... How then do we maximize our profit subject to constraints that this number has to be less than 500, this number has to be less than 60, this number has to be less than 90, and um, uh, so what do we do? Well, Excel has another add-on program, uh, and it's called the Solver. Okay, now to access the Solver, I'm going to hit Data. There's data. I go all the way over here to the right side. There's solver. I'm going to click on solver. I'm going to show you how we set up solver to find the solution to our problem. So I click on solver. Now, set objective. The objective is what cell we're trying to maximize or minimize or what. And we're trying to maximize or minimize cell F5. So it's already in there, cell F5, and we're trying to maximize it there. Now, what cells are we going to change? We're going to change the number of barrels of blonde and red that we produce here. 
and that is going to be C4 and D4. That's already in here too. Well, I would select that and then write C4 and D4. So I'm trying to, let me show you. I'll click on that and, and I'll just delete it there. Now, click here. Oh, not that, sorry. I just, uh, this, this solver gives me a little problem from time to time, or when I run Excel, I can't see the cursor that I'm working with. So this is going to be C4 and D4. So let me write that down. C, C4, um, to D4. D4, there. So that's C4 and D4 there. There you see my Excel went out on me again here. And um, here we go. Now, our constraints, subject to constraints. All right, we have three constraints that the value of this cell has to be less than the value of this cell. This is E10 has to be less than or equal to uh, G10. And that's what this first line says. Okay, so I'm okay there. If it didn't say that, I'd hit add and then write it in. Let me show you how, how that comes up here. So I'm going to delete that. Now I'm going to add the constraint. Add. And I add that constraint by saying I want cell E10 to be less than or equal to, and then the constraint here is D10. So E10 is less than E10. Add. Okay. So what happened there? Let me try that again. This is less than or equal to that. And then I'll put, OK. Now, so E10 less than or equal to G10. Now, I have that one twice. I don't really need it twice because I just added it in a second time. So let me delete that. But that's how you add the constraints. You hit Add, put in a constraint and hit add, put in the constraint. So our constraints are, these numbers have to be less than the quantity available. Makes sense. We're trying to maximize this value in that cell, which is um, set objective. This says C4. I don't want C4 to be the objective. I want F5 to be the objective. So if I said C4 before, sorry about that. Here's the objective there. Total profit is F5. So, uh, by changing the cells C4 and D4 subject to these constraints. So it looks like I have the problem set up correctly. Now I also have choice here of choosing uh, the solving method. And there are two methods available. There's this nonlinear function. There's a simplex. Simplex, let me click that because the simplex is a algorithm specifically designed to um, specifically designed to solve the uh, uh, the linear programming problems so mm -hmm. solve and the solution says that I want 18 barrels of blonde 24 barrels of red my profit is 3240 and uh, my constraints are all satisfied. Notice I'm maximizing out on my hops and I'm maximizing out on my malt. Now, it will give me a uh, sort of a summary of the problem. Sometimes it takes a long time. And let me click on this. So here. And uh, so that's it. We have the problem. It has an answer report given here. This is a summary report of the solution to our problem is added on as a separate sheet. So that's how we use the solver. Let's see, now this thing right in here, this pops up somewhere along the line. I was trying to look up something on the internet and I downloaded some crap here. So I have to figure out how to, uh, how to keep that from popping up. Okay, so uh, that's it.